I uh, took way too long of a walk and then felt way too tired. And I was moving like a slow poke, but here I am. Welcome. It is Saturday night. I still have my hair up and my towel that I should definitely wash because it's been too long since we last did laundry. But that is life now, isn't it? There's a lot of plates in my cupboards. I think my phone is a little askew. Um, hey spleenies. Yeah, y'all were more on time than I was. Hi Naz. <laughs> Killing the look. You guys like this look? I'm gonna take it off in a couple of minutes, otherwise I'll just be like dripping shower water everywhere and that's gonna be very gross. Um, hi everyone. So yes, my original idea for tonight's live was that I would be trying to develop a butter mochi recipe. Um, which is something that I would have done on the weekends anyway. Um, I have to develop three recipes for Delish on site next week, so sometimes on the weekends I'll get started, that way I don't feel stressed and anxious during the week, because, um, when I develop them I also have to shoot videos for them, more likely than not, and I just like to have some padding and assurance that, you know, I'm not just doing everything on the fly, that I have some stability in my life still. Here is our starter that we fed last night. It is looking kind of bubbly on the underside. You can see a little bit of bubbly structures. Um, it's starting to smell not so bad. It's still a little bit... It starts to smell more like rye now. It smells a little bit yogurty, if that makes sense. A little bit of yogurt, a little bit of pickles, a little bit of like maybe June you shouldn't have put bacteria laden flour in this starter and mild regret, but we're just gonna keep the mistake going and see where that takes us. Erin baked these cookies today, even though we have like 8,000 jars of peanut butter from my peanut butter extravaganza, he went out and went on a walk and decided to buy a two dollar bag of like Betty Crocker peanut butter cookie mix and he made these cookies himself so they look pretty good he says that they're a little bit hard um I don't know what he did to them because when he started baking them I went out for my walk so that we could have some alone time apart and uh you know without my constant nagging these turned out a little bit harder than he thought um they would the package, however, only called for one egg, three tablespoons oil, and one tablespoon water. Not a lot of liquid for a whole pack of powder substance. I don't know what you're doing, Betty Crocker. But, um, butter mochi is a, apparently a Hawaiian specialty. It is influenced by, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, babinka from Filipino cuisine, which itself is then influenced by a whole lot of other cuisines. Um, I was trying to read the Wikipedia earlier and I got very distracted and then I decided that before my anxiety got too bad for the day, I had to go out and catch some sun, so I did. I went off and dropped some compost off, which is why these bags are rinsed, kind of still wet and upside down because these are the bags that I dump my compost into, these zippy bags. Um, they smell a little composty, but you know what? Who's smelling them all day? Nobody. Just me. Just Aaron. And then I tell Aaron to ignore it, because it's going under the kitchen sink. Nobody cares. Ta-da! That's where we hide all the corpses. It'll be fine. Um, butter mochi, a lot of variations exist. Usually it has mochiko, glutinous rice flour. Um, it also has canned coconut milk. It also has evaporated milk. Or some recipes do use skim milk, reduced fat milk, whole milk, variations exist all over the place. Some recipes have shredded coconut inside, on top, some don't at all. Erin gags on shredded coconut, so I was thinking tonight I'll test a smaller batch just so I don't go wasting a whole lot of ingredients, making a mess, and then having no one to feed my failures to. Um, and out of that small test batch, I'll maybe just like put a little bit of shredded coconut on some 
and not on another part so that Aaron can taste it without gagging. I was also thinking, I'm gonna need your thoughts on this. It's good that y'all are here. Usually butter mochi is baked in a square pan and it's baked like a square cake. And then after it's cooled a little bit, you cut them into squares and you serve them to your guests and it's like this nice, cakey, but still mochi-like texture. It's a little, some Tabby Eats, if you follow Tabby Eats on YouTube, um, two very lovely gentlemen who live in Japan, uh, one of whom I believe grew up in Hawaii. Um, he described it as half brownie, half mochi, which sounds absolutely like heaven to me. So you could go the square pan way, which seems like the most common way to do it, but you could also do muffin tin way. And I have these mini muffin tins that I think would be perfect for testing in because I'm making a tiny batch. So this means that I would be able to dollop little bits of the batter into the cups and then also customize each cup with maybe different sugars on top, different coconuts on top. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Give me your thoughts. I've talked too much. No, no shredded coconut. I love fresh coconut. I love Tabby Eats. Mmm, sounds amazing. Never had butter mochi. Muffin tin. Peanut butter mochi. Oh, peanut butter mochi. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay, well, I saw Brittany vote for muffin tin. I don't know what anyone else is saying. Jacqueline also says I'm freezing. So, either my phone is dying because it's too old and it's like, June, I've had enough of your crap, I'm not putting up with this live feed thing anymore, or Spectrum is just being sucky. So, I apologize for that, guys. If I'm freezing, we'll just have to pretend we're still in the dial-up days. This is my beloved muffin tin that I um, got at a garage sale. I think it's rusting. I guess I didn't take care of it very well, um, but I got it for three bucks. I didn't have cash on me, and they only took cash because it's a garage sale. So I walked half an hour out of the way to go to the nearest bank, got my money, and then came back, hoping that during the last hour, nobody else bought it, and nobody else did. I don't, maybe it's not rust. I don't think, I don't know what leaked in the oven. Uh, that's kind of gross, June. Yikes. Here is more of the riveting content you paid for. Washing dishes, getting grime off of muffin pans. stress too hard about it now because I'm hoping it'll just kind of carbonize and burn off in the oven and if it doesn't it adds character to our muffin pan isn't that right people pay a lot for character nowadays we get to have it for free from mistakes it'll all be good all right it's time for this hair to come off Twenty-seven people watching. Really? It's a Saturday night, guys. Aren't you gonna go out and party or something? You know, hopping parties all over the world. Not like we're in the middle of a pandemic or anything, right? Right? Ah, uh, okay. Party. Somebody play music. I mean, I don't want to play music because I don't want to get flagged, and then I don't want like music companies to come after me. I'm going to give them like three cauliflowers from my fridge and that's going to be the end of that lawsuit. It's not worth it. Um, eating watermelon candy and vibing. Yes. Thank you. This hair is really wet right now and really stiff. Guys, don't bleach your hair unless you're ready to deal with like straw for the next three years. Um, but yeah, I wrote up a little draft of my test one version of the recipe. Let me pull it up. By the way, today is kind of um, 
cooler in New York City, which is why I'm like more okay with testing this recipe today because it is indeed a baked recipe. Um, all of a sudden we dropped from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 degrees today. Got really cold. Weather. Spring. What you gonna do? So normally when I'm recipe developing, I basically just go and stalk other people's recipes and see what other people are doing first and foremost. If I have a lot of time, I would love to watch like 80 YouTube videos on the tutorial of how to make that dish. And I like to observe everyone's skills and I'm basically like leeching off of their knowledge. Um, but there, there's no food there's like no recipe copy, copyright law. You can't really copyright a recipe per se. You can copyright the specific words that you use to describe the procedure of the recipe. But as for the proportions and the amounts, you actually can't copyright that. So it's very interesting. Obviously, it's not a good thing if you're just taking someone else's recipe and then publishing it and making money off of it because that's just like plagiarism, but somehow accepted, I guess, because there's no law protecting the original recipe holder, which is kind of fucked up. Um, goes along with the rest of our world. Um, so the first website that I looked at was drivemehungry.com. Chewy Butter Mochi. She does them in little cupcake muffin tins. Sorry. I know, lighting's crap. Aaron was like looking back at this live yesterday and he was like, June, your quality is crap. People's gonna, people's not gonna watch it because your quality's crap. And I'm like, I know my quality's crap, but also I'm not doing this for the views. I'm just doing it so that I feel like I have a purpose in life. Who the hell knows why I'm doing this, guys? As long as like two of you enjoy it, that's enough for me. Um... Another inspo, we call them inspo, inspiration, that I looked at was from allrecipes.com, Ono Butter Mochi, 196 ratings, five stars. And the first uh, photo that pops up that of course you can't see because my lighting is crap. If I twist it <laughs> hitherto, you can see flashes of toasted coconut on top. And it looks very nice. It almost looks like it's so set on the bottom that it's like a shortbread crust. I highly encourage you to check out these recipes and just like look for yourself how good it looks. But basically, this is kind of like the mochi version of pound cake is what I've gathered. A shit ton of sugar. A shit ton of mochi powder. A shit ton of butter. <laughs> eggs. A lot of eggs. The eggs vary from three to five per recipe. We're only going to test with one egg whatever that amount is. Usually on my first go around, I get too over eager and um, I just end up like changing so many variables, it comes out like crap, which is why I said in the description of this live, get ready to watch me fail because usually as is my, uh, what is that word? My MO, uh, I just try to do too much and then I fail. That's what happens when you try to do too much guys, you just fail. So just be prepared to fail and then you won't be miserable. The third inspo that I have is from wildwildwhisk.com, coconut uh, mochi. So this one isn't butter mochi, it's a recipe for coconut mochi, but I loved it and I put it as, as inspo. I'm gonna do this hitherto thing again so you could kind of catch the photo off the glare. They're kind of like little muffin tin cakeies. They're a little bit cakeier because they're not actually butter mochi. Um, but they look adorable. And so I kind of look, I took a look at all three recipes and then I kind of just like synthesized my own amounts. I wrote for testing this would be a third batch size, meaning one third of my intended finalized batch size. But I don't really know guys, who knows what I'm doing. All I know is I'm kind of hungry. Are you guys, did you guys bring snacks? Who's eating stuff? <laughs> Feed me. Mochi is not baked. Like Japanese mochi is not baked. But this butter mochi recipe, which is a Hawaiian recipe, is baked. 
<gasps> Somebody's making powdered queijo. I still don't know if I'm saying that right, but I think I'm doing a much better job. Thank you for all of your tutorials. It's gonna take me a while. My learning curve is deep. Do I want some wine, Naz? No, I don't want some wine. Ew, keep it to yourself. Thank you. I do have these crackers though. <gasps> guys, yes. I was waiting for you guys because I'm pretending that you're my actual friends now. Nez is actually my friend in real life. The rest of you, I haven't seen you in the flesh, so you could just be like apparitions in the matrix or my imaginations uh, because maybe I've gone crazy and I'm just hallucinating this whole thing, in which case Nez is also not real. Whoops. Um, but I got those apples from the farmer's market last week and I would like to eat one now with you guys and I'll give you tasting notes before we dive into this recipe because we're already off the rails. Like, even before I start testing this recipe, I'm already super chaotic. Feeling very manic right now. I'm sure I'll just crash right after the stream ends. Into a puddle on the floor in a million little pieces. Which I never read. Did anyone ever read that book? Alright guys, you have a choice. You get to vote. You have one you have one minute to vote. You either have a choice of watching me eat Arkansas Black, or you have a choice of watching me eat Asopus Spitzenberg. Which one do you want? Let me know. Nez, I don't have a pink lady. I didn't buy pink ladies. That was not a choice. You don't get to vote. You don't get to vote for Bernie Sanders when it's only Biden or Trump on the ticket. I'm sorry. Aaron did. Aaron is you, Nez. But I'm not gonna eat a pink lady because I don't got one. Sorry. Woo! Whoa, 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 whoa. Arkansas Black. Spitzenberg. Arkansas. Spitzenberg. Arkansas. Arkansas. Second one. Spitzenberg. Jesus Christ. This is why this country is so divided. This is why we never get anything done. Y'all can't even decide on an apple. All right, let me show you the apples. Maybe we'll do a revote. That was like the primary and it completely failed. This is why democracies do not work. I got a solution for this country's problems. Yeah, what's your solution? Hear me out. Yeah? Why can't we all just get along? Because we want different things. <laughs> Even though we don't know what they are and they might not be that different at all, this is the Asopus Spitzenberg. I don't know if I'm saying it right. E-S-O-P-U-S Spitzenberg. It is knobbly. I love them ugly. The uglier they are, the more um, bulbous they are, the crunchier they are, the tartar they are, the more flavorful they are. This one has a little notch in it. It's gonna be fantastic. I see blotches. This one is the Arkansas Black. I also picked one with russeting on top. It kind of looks like potato russeting. Um, the word black is filtered out. Somebody just commented black. <laughs> What's, they, you have a filter for the word black, Jim. <laughs> I didn't, listen guys, I didn't set up a single filter. This is all YouTube's generic filter for the chat. So if your chat is getting blocked, it ain't me. Cause I didn't set any additional words on top of YouTube's original algorithm. So if YouTube has a problem with the word black, YouTube, get it together. Half and half. The Arkansas one looks like it may be mealy. Colleen, I'm gonna prove you wrong right now, girl. We're going with the Arkansas. These apples were quite pricey, so I'm not eating two of them in the same night because I wanna be sure that I have my palate completely ready and blank slate to taste them fully. So this is our guy today. Eat both, give other half to Aaron. I like that idea. No, we're only tasting the Arkansas black. Mm. See? I fooled you. I made you think no, that. I made doing you that. Let's do that. Nope. <laughs> I made you all think, him included, that this was a democracy. But in case you haven't noticed, we actually don't have a choice. Ooh, there's another filtered comment. Let me go see what's up. <laughs> Aron's cookies. Oh, can you eat a cookie on cam? Yeah. Maybe they would like to see you eat your cookie. Because they're pervs who like to see us live our lives, and we're pervs who, let, who like to uh, uh, show you our lives. Speak for yourself, June. It's your stream. 
And you like to join it, don't you? I I don't jo I join it for fun sometimes. Okay. <laughs> well, you came in just now, didn't you? Yeah, because I want a cookie. <laughs> Yesterday you didn't have to come cook your soup until I sometimes, went live. Sometimes I'm a burger. Here's our beauteous Arkansas black. You can see the beautiful curves. You can see just how smooth the skin is. This is a sexy apple, y'all. The skin smells like no trace of sweetness, just pure vegetation. Almost like if you bent down and you smelled carrots that were still in the soil. And there's a trace of like little dandelion weeds 50 feet down the road. A little bit of fresh grass coming in. This might be like a early August in Virginia type of smell. Before you guys think I'm the insane one, June told me to uh, drizzle milk on the cookies before microwaving them. So what you're about to see is her idea. Guys, the juice on my knife is pink. That, that is how beauteous this apple is. Okay, I did it. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a good ass apple. That's so firm. It's super tart. I love it. It is tart right now. But the thing about Arkansas Black is the longer it goes into storage, the sweeter it gets so i have the other one in there and we might just let it go for another two weeks and see how the flavor changes do you like it yeah good rate, time. rate it we're number freaks here great apple out of 10. wow I love it, guys. I love it. Y'all ready for this? Saturday night. I went on a walk earlier today. There were some emails that were stressing me out. And I was listening to music and taking a walk outside. And it was very nice and sunny. It was a lovely day. I even bought some Brussels sprouts for myself. They were 99 cents a pound. It was amazing. And yet, despite all my blessings, I still felt sad. It's easy to feel sad nowadays. But we're going to try to center ourselves and pull in all of our anxieties a little bit. And just remember that we are here and that we are. And sometimes that's enough. Deep breath in. What's your and Aaron's favorite type of apple? You might as well ask me which finger I use the most. Low vitamin D levels messes with your mood. Can you give me my vitamins now? Ooh. The middle became very soft, but it tastes better than dry. Nice. For sure. So it's like warm milk and cookies. Warm milk and cookies, yes. Dominique and Sel, you gonna steal this idea now? He already has that. It's a cookie cup with milk. Overrated. How the hell do you eat a cookie cup? Just eat a freaking cookie. Just eat a freaking cookie. Anyway, 
Uh, um, 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 thank you. Vitamin D, thank you for the reminder. Everybody eat your vitamin D. <laughs> Which finger do you use the most? Probably my thumb because I'm a human. See, look, thumb and ring finger. Those were the two that grabbed the tablet. So I guess if you have to chop three of them off, I would need these two the most. Do I have water? Um, we are currently almost half an hour into our live stream and I still have not baked a thing yet. Great. I'm trying to find my scale. Oh, there it is. It's on, it's underneath your plate. May I move? Yes. You're almost a real Twitch streamer now by starting your stream and doing the intro for like two hours. I mean, this is, this is the content, guys, right? You didn't actually come to see me test things, did you? Um, I'm just here for you, June. Yeah, thank you. I'm here for you. Okay. I'm here. I hear you. Thank you for your willingness to be here for me. I'll use a clear bowl, so I guess it's easier to show you guys what's going on inside the bowl. I'm going to try to dump in three quarters cup of mochiko and uh, I wrote a third of a cup of each of granulated and brown sugar, but let's just go in with a quarter cup of each for now because I can always add in more sugar if we taste it better and if it's not sweet enough. Then I'll go in with half a teaspoon of baking powder and then a third of a teaspoon of kosher salt, which isn't gonna be a direct measurement. I just want the end result to be one whole teaspoon of kosher salt and seeing as how we're doing a third of the batch, this is not gonna work guys, I already feel it in my bones. When I'm testing things, I like to test all of my ingredients on the scale so that even though I have a cut measurement going in, I can see how many grams went in. That way I can multiply my amounts and divide my amounts with much more flexibility. I know exactly how much weight went into each one. This uh, step actually just further confuses me later on in the process when I overcomplicate things and then I decide, wow, um, how much do I multiply this by and that by? So a quarter cup of mochi is about 40 grams. Aaron even washes dishes. Of course I wash dishes. You should see how many dishes I wash on a normal day. Too many. June, can you start washing all the dishes? Yeah. Thanks. He did wash all the, he's starting to wash all the dishes when um, I'm not filming because it is just really hard for him to wash things in here while I'm still filming, guys. That's why you never see him on camera doing the dishes because if he does the dishes, there's gonna be water sounds, as you just heard. That's gonna interfere with my audio capture. He's also gonna be in the background and he's gonna be in the way of me doing my little soliloquies, you know? So like it's just like, don't uh, do that. You're gonna give us carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, yeah, I actually try to wash all of the dishes in the house if I can see them, I'll wash them even if they're June's because her uh, skin condition, the you know constant washing of soap on her hands aggravates it. So I do try to do that to help it. But she doesn't want me washing all of them. She'll like say, don't wash my dishes, but I'll do it anyways. Not to, not to give myself credit or anything, it's just, you know, I saw all those comments early on, especially in the early days of Budget Eats, like, June cooks all this food and does the dishes and Aaron only eats it and, and bitches about it. And it's like, well, they're partly right. I do eat June food and bitch about it. But only when it deserves critique. Usually it's great. Usually for things like sugar when I'm testing. Yeah, he's right. He's a good helper, guys. You should give him more um, credit. Usually for testing things, damn, Erin, I should have bought more brown sugar today. Shit. I don't measure sugar because sugar tends to be about 200 grams per cup. So if I'm going with a quarter cup, it's an easy 50 grams. Sometimes I go five grams more um, just because, you know, 20 grams isn't a whole lot. It's like a tablespoon. 
some people do have do have that difference for example I didn't pack that quarter cup very tightly just now and it only measured 43 grams so I'm just gonna pop in seven more grams brown sugar because I have it um, to make an even 50 grams just so that I know if I packed it a little more it probably would have been 50 grams or even 55 grams depending on how gung-ho you went on packing your brown sugar in for the white sugar, we're gonna go in. Let's see how much a quarter cup is. There's really no packing white granulated sugar. It's also just about how much you're leveling it off. So that one was 56 grams. So you see it's usually in the 50 to 55 gram range for a quarter cup of sugar. All right, what's next? Half a teaspoon baking powder, kosher salt. No, you cannot substitute baking powder for baking soda. They are not the same. They are not interchangeable, guys. Do not do it. Do not do it. Baking soda is way more potent than baking powder. Sometimes a quarter teaspoon of baking soda can be almost as potent as three quarters teaspoon or even one teaspoon of baking powder, depending on what else you have in your mix. Just don't think the two are the same because they have baking in their name. They're not the same. Just as Cat Luna is watching. Hi, Luna. I hope you're enjoying this chaos. Lam Vu is watching from Vietnam. Hi, I Vietnam. did not pronounce that correctly, I'm sure. A scant half teaspoon for my third of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And all the dries are in, so what we're going to do is we're just going to whisk them all together until they're combined like we're supposed to do sometimes i'm really lazy and i don't do like two separate bowls for the dries and the wets i don't know it just if i'm recipe developing i will but if i'm not i won't milkshake if you were watching yesterday you would know i cook i cooked last night with june uh and nez i absolutely do want some wine i've been meaning to take a walk down to aster to load up I am way too dry in this house right now, past few weeks. <gasps> Guys, vote below. Do you think I should add a splash of banana liqueur to this? So then we would have vanilla, banana liqueur, and coconut milk going on inside. Is that too much of a liberty to take with this recipe? I don't want to fuck it up too much, but I want to fuck it up a little bit and put a little bit of a twist on it. I am a Pisces. And yes, Nez, <laughs> whenever you want to walk with me to Aster, let me know. Just text. Somebody really hates banana na na na. The hater of banana na na na. Do you also hate coconut? It would make sense. Um, Aaron, which budget week episode is your favorite so far? Dude, if you think I can pay attention to anything that's happened the past few weeks, just time has been a flat circle since this whole thing started, since I've been stuck at home. I have no idea what's been going on. I don't know what I did yesterday. Sometimes I don't even know what I did this morning. You would. You would have, I would have to like sit down and rewatch all the budgeties episodes for me to even remember what happened. But uh, I don't know, June. Can you say which budgety episode was your favorite? I can't. I can't remember which budget eats episode was my favorite. But in the most recent one, the sweet potato fry hummus tortilla wrap was bomb. Aaron ate three of them, which meant I only got to eat one of them, which meant I should have made more. But we ran out of ingredients. But that, that was awesome. That that recipe was like perfect amount of textures. You got like that kind of slightly taut, slightly chewy, but still like nice toothsome tortilla. And then that creamy garlicky, like three layers of garlic hummus. And then with the slightly, slightly crunchy, still baked sweet potato fries. Mm -hmm. The connection is dropping again, apparently. So somebody in chat. I'm sorry for all the connection problems. Thank you for letting us know. I just really don't know what I can do about it right now. Erin, I think I need to get coconut milk from up above. Gibson the Pug and his alpaca pal are watching. Gibson, I, I love your photo. You guys look so cute together, you and your alpaca. Uh, other people say the connection is okay. So, I don't know. Maybe it's your connection, bro. In which case, tell your internet provider that they suck 
and they should give you your dang money back. Oh my god! What happened? Um, don't worry. I just freaked out for no reason. I washed the lid of the can because it can get really gross. Um, and then I thought it said expired in 2020, but it was actually expired in 2022. If I was it like, expired in 2020, there's yeah, no way you wouldn't use it. Exactly. <laughs> you would use it if it expired in 1986. No, I would, but I would have <laughs> been like, why have I had this can of coconut milk for four years that it expired? Do I have a favorite budget eats dish? I honestly don't. I haven't like thought about it enough uh, to, cause there's been like dozens and dozens so far. Um, one that comes to mind immediately, but maybe just cause it was relatively recent is I think during low carb week, June made a soup that had uh, meatballs in it. And that was awesome. I just remember the spice mix juice for that was amazing. The meatballs were excellent. Do you remember that soup June? Aaron, I thought I bought Evaporated milk, but I didn't. We might not have evaporated milk. It might be a crisis. Oh my god, no! Here in the oh, Kitchen. Oh, no, I found it, I found it, I found it. Crisis averted. Ooh. Oh god. Okay, guys, so the thing about evaporated milk is for baking purposes, I love evaporated milk. If you ever taste this stuff straight, it's kind of disgusting. It kind of tastes like it's canned or it's been sitting in cardboard for a while. It tastes kind of like the skin off of boiled milk, which I personally love, but a lot of people like kind of shirk back and, and disgust that. Kind of tastes like that. But in baked goods, it just adds so much fattiness. It's almost as fatty as heavy cream, not quite, but it has that kind of like dehydrated, almost like aged milk flavor. And I love that flavor of baked goods. Does June enjoy making videos? Do you think I would be here if I didn't enjoy making videos? For free? I'm not getting paid for this content. I'm just here to hang out with you guys. What's both of y'all's favorite meal from childhood? Um, I grew up eating a very simple diet, just like sort of a standard American suburban diet of shit like uh, pasta, pizza, you know, just whatever kids Butter. White kids in the suburbs eat, I guess. Uh, whatever my father or mother picked up from Wegmans that day. Um, so I branched out a lot. In college, I just started eating, like, everything. Um, but, yeah, I guess just, like, my favorite dish from childhood is one of my favorite dishes now, which is just, like, simple pasta, like pasta with olive oil, butter, you know, garlic, black pepper, that sort of thing. How about you, June? Favorite dish from childhood? The first thing that popped up, maybe just because um, we were talking about it yesterday, was the goat's eye that my mom used to buy for me in Beijing. You see, that's what I'm talking about. I was pizza, pasta, and tendies, and she was goat's eye. But also, my grandma, I still don't know what part of the fish this is, but there's a part of the fish where it's like, I guess it might it might be some, like, something about their gills. It looks like two little bubbles. It looks like two little air balloons, like tiny ones, this, like this size. And she used to make a soup, like a fish soup, and there would be those two little bubbles in that soup. And I loved whatever that was. I just like loved chomping down on it and popping them open. And then there would be like some soup that would like squish out. Uh, neither of us drive. We don't even have driver's licenses. Yeah, we, we can't are, survive. We are in our 30s without driver's licenses. Correct. Quick, what is 14 times 2.5? 28 You're asking plus me. <laughs> 7, 35. 35, 35. Somebody said 7. I don't think that's right. No, it is. It's 28 <laughs> plus 7. 14 times 2.5? Yeah. Is 7? 28 plus 7. Oh, okay. I don't know what you just said, but I'll... I believe you. Uh, Aaron, you introduced me to tahine, which was a flavor I've been trying to manually recreate for years. Danke. Are you in Germany? Can you even find tahine in Germany? Is that why you said danke? But either way, very cool. You're welcome. Enjoy. Guys, have you ever just eaten like butter straight? Like not a whole chunk, but just like a little tiny sliver. It's amazing. Butter is amazing. 
Um, two and a half tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and like half melt it in the microwave. I don't want it completely liquefied. I do want it softened enough where if I whisk it with my other ingredients, it'll turn into this like almost thick mayonnaise-y texture. Uh, do you know how to swim? Most native NYC don't know how to swim. I didn't know that stereotype about New Yorkers, that we don't know how to swim. But I'm not from uh, New York City anyway, so I moved here starting in college. And I do generally know how to swim. I think June knows, I think June wouldn't drown, is what we can say about her swimming my, abilities. She wouldn't drown in a pool. <laughs> my college actually had a swim requirement for graduation. So we either had to take a whole semester of a swim class or pass a swim test. I wouldn't drown for 15 minutes and then I think like something, either my fear of water would overtake me in a panic attack and cause me to like just slowly hyperventilate to death or I would get a weird muscle cramp because I'm old now and my body doesn't work and then I would stop treading water and then I would drown. Either way, put me in the water for 20 minutes and I'll be dead. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, you're welcome. You could say it was an accident. In addition to our butter, I'm gonna be adding in um, a little bit of coconut milk, a little bit of evaporated milk. A lot of traditional recipes call for equal amounts of both. So I'm gonna go in with like a third cup of each for now. I really like microwaving butter in batches. You can slowly observe it melting. What are you doing, Aaron? I'm staring at your jeans. Because somebody said, I need June jeans in my life. They're very high-waisted. Like, my belly button is here, and this is the top of the waist. It's almost at the end of my rib cage. It's like ultra mom jeans. Uh, and June is wearing Burke. No, are those Burks? These are knockoff Burks. These are knockoff Burks that we got in Hanoi. Uh, there was a lady who had just like a blanket on street level with like all these sandals and there was like hordes of people just grabbing them and I was like, I'll grab them, my flip flop, which I always bring with me on trips because I don't like barefoot in sh strange showers, it just grosses me out, broke. Uh, so to replace it, I bought these and they're still with us. It's amazing. Okay, this is kind of what I'm looking for, half melted. You can see that it's kind of sloshy on the bottom, but there's still bits of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start whisking this a little bit so that, um, I forget who I was watching, but somebody was making a recipe on YouTube and she was basically saying we're kind of like tempering the butter the way we temper chocolate by reintroducing some of these crystals in the unmelted butter back into the melted butter. And so you kind of get this like creamy mayonnaise-y look. It's not melted where the butter has separated into the white milk solids and the clear yellow fat. It's still pretty emulsified, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm pretty happy with myself. I'm gonna go in with one egg, maybe one yolk for color, but we'll see how the color looks after just one egg. Wow. I'm talking too much. I feel tired. Her t-shirt is from Nonavo Pizza in Portland, uh, which you guys should definitely go to because it's awesome and it's run by a great guy and they have amazing pizza. Yeah, if you saw me use this earlier on our trash pizza, the spicy honey, it's from the same place. Um, and the shirt says, pizza breath is sexy. And there's the pizza box that says Nonavo. June is a Libra. Uh, will this channel only be for live streams? What do you want to see? I don't have time to make videos. I have a full-time job. Do yeah. You know how tiring it she is can't. To videos? She can't make videos in between making other videos. <laughs> um. I know you guys want to see more, but like video production from start to finish is intense. They don't make movies for years for nothing. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. Uh, Seven dollar farmers market eggs. Two of them are blue. Aaron used a third blue one earlier today. I just, I'm gonna save them forever and not use them and just look at them until I finally have to use them. It's beautiful, isn't it? It comes in a green carton. It's lovely. 
Support your local farmers when you can. Not everything I eat is budget level. Um, just treat yourself every now and then. Probably should have room temp this. I'm gonna room temp it real fast so that it doesn't make the butter freeze up again by plopping this in some hot tap water. You could post all the outtakes of the delish filming here. Uh, I don't think you realize the outtakes stay in the video. June, June lets her disasters be in those videos. That makes them exciting. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, that's what my Instagram feed is whenever I film Budget Eats. Like, I put up the m most hilarious bits there. So everything else is just either me fumbling over my lines or yelling at Aaron. That's it. We are making butter mochi tonight. Correction, we are testing butter mochi tonight. It will be a failure. Keep your expectations low, very low. Should I eat the core of this apple? Cyanide, daily cyanide intake? Do you guys know this June fact? Probably many of you do that she eats the entire apple. Even the stem sometimes. The shoes that I wear on my walks that people love the most are the brown leather ones from Birkenstocks. And then the white high top lace ups are also from Birkenstocks. But the shoes I was wearing today are really old ratty sneakers from Ultra, A-L-T-R-A. And they are great if you have really wide toe box like me. I have duck feet, like my heel is normal. And then the bone structure of my feet is like this. And then my toe box is like twice the width of my heel. So a lot of shoes pinch them in. They gave me bunions. They give me a lot of issues. They make my walking painful. And Ultra is really, sneakers are comfortable, but Ultras are the most comfortable sneaker I've found so far. Hello from Vancouver. We had a good time in Vancouver. We did. Yeah, there was a really good Japanese restaurant we went to, and what, Richmond? That neighborhood was really fun too. There was a Hong Kong style barbecue restaurant in Richmond that was closed, unfortunately, when we tried to go. So we'll have to go back for that. Hello from Hong Kong, nice. As I was opening it, says open other end. Why do I open the other end? Why I just would you opened open this one. The upside down end. Your label is this way. If you want people to open the other end, just put your label the other way. What are you doing? A taste of Thai? Uh, hi, Paris. Hi, Orlando. Hi, Calgary, Alberta. Uh, what is your favorite travel destination? Mine is Japan. Easily. I want to go to Japan every year, and I used to go to Japan at least once a year until COVID happened. I don't know about June, though. Guys, look at this. So convenient. It says a third of a cup is 80 mil. I don't even have to dirty a measuring cup anymore. I'll just measure out 80 mil. This is another reason why you should get yourself a scale if you like to bake. Hello, hello, Mexico City and Melbourne. Apparently it's pronounced Melbourne. Melbourne! Not Melbourne. 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 Does Melbourne. that trigger you? Does that trigger you if I say Melbourne? Uh, Aaron, when are we going to Japan? Says Nez. Nez, we can walk there. We can walk there after we walk to uh, to uh, Aster. Let's do that on the same walk. Guys, I don't know if you know this. You probably do, uh, because there are some really wise folks in here. But never, ever, ever keep your canned foods in the can once you open the can, apparently. It's uh, really not good for you. I'm not sure what the chemical process is, but just get it out of the can. Move it into another container ASAP. What is your favorite dish that your MIL makes? What's a Mother-in-law. Who? Which of us has a mother-in-law? <laughs> I guess Sufang. We're not married, guys. We're not married. <laughs> Um, but if Su Fang was my mother-in-law, uh, she makes some really good, just sort of everything. Everything she makes I likes. I like, why did I say I likes? Um, 
You like all of her like uh, meats. Yeah, I like her meat dishes. She sometimes makes like very vegetable heavy dishes that you know are very healthy and like home cooking style, which I respect. But you know, it's not it's not my my jam. But Su Fang is a really good cook. That's where June learned, partly. She likes to say she isn't. Isn't a good cook? Yeah. Oh. I don't know if that's because she's humble or she's just Chinese. Chinese people like play that humble game where anything, any compliments you pay a Chinese person, they will deflect it by saying, Nali, Nali, which means where, where, as if they're like, where is my talent? Oh, you. Uh, I used to speak Chinese okay when I lived in China, but it's been almost 10 years now, so, or more, I don't even know how long, basically 10 years, so very rusty, but I still know many of the food words, which is really all I care about anyways. Uh, are we going to get married ever? No. Um, and... Is June's mom watching? Probably. Hi, mom. I hope you're okay. Um, actually, I don't know if she's watching because she said her company is holding like an anniversary event on the internet tonight, like a virtual event. So I don't know if she's here. She could be. Is this too many questions? Am I interrupting your cooking? No. Does somebody okay. ask that? No, I am. I'm asking that. Uh, what will you absolutely not eat, June? I think I'm going to have a very hard time eating brain. I also am not a fan of blood uh, stuff, but I do like the blood sausage at Fayul, P-H-A-Y-U-L in Jackson Heights. The best restaurant in New York City. P-H-A-Y-U-L. So many DMs asking me how to spell that restaurant because I mentioned it a couple times. Um, what else? I really don't think I have the courage in me to try Balut. It's that like duck embryo that's still in the egg baby shell. Chi baby chicken. Um, Mixing my coconut milk, my evaporated milk, my butter tingmo. together. Hell yeah, give me some tingmo. Um, I'm gonna go in with a half teaspoon of, we're testing with imitation vanilla, guys. Don't kill me, please. I know it's not good. I know it's low quality. I know it doesn't taste like vanilla vanilla, but like, I have trash taste. It's fine for me. Coconut milk, evaporated milk, butter, egg yolk. Okay, I'm gonna go in with one egg first and then we'll pop in more sugar and more yolk if I think we need it. We might not need it. I don't recommend um, doing this, but I will be tasting the batter before we bake it just because, just because. Tess has her mother on slightly kosher. Yeah. Cool. Somebody wants you to get Sufang on alive, like by Zoom. Or I mean, something. maybe, maybe my mom's willing to do that. I don't know. She's a pretty private person. I like to respect her privacy. I'm the daughter that's like, did I get swapped out at the hospital by accident? Like, is she actually not my mother? Because we are very different in a lot of ways. Um, so she tends to think that I talk too much to strangers. What are your favorite restaurants in New York? Uh, there's so many, like I have a gigantic list. My number one is Fayul, as we already mentioned. Uh, let's go borough by borough. What's your favorite restaurant in Manhattan? The f I'm just gonna give you the first one that came to mind, no filter. The immediate reaction was Raku, which is an udon noodle bar. They have two locations in lower Manhattan. Their udon is so good. It's a square cut udon, it's not round. Um, the whole vibe is like very authentically Japanese, if I can use that word without triggering people. Um, their appetizers are very simple but flavorful. Reminds me of a lot of the food that I ate in Japan, just like honoring the flavors of everything and not overdoing anything. They have like monkfish, they have like mountain yam, a lot of traditional ingredients. They have this kick-ass homemade mochi that you can add into your bowl of hot udon. And it's, yes, it's expensive. It's like 14 to 24 per bowl of udon, but that is just New York City restaurant prices. So if you're gonna go eat out, I like that. I'm gonna add the wets 
into the dries. Um, after I mix this together, what I'm going to do is actually dump all of this batter into another bowl because I did something stupid. I didn't weigh this Pyrex bowl at first. I like to weigh the yield of my entire batter so that I have an idea of exactly how much I yielded with the raw batter and also how much I'm putting into each cup so I can see what the textures are if I use one tablespoon of batter, two tablespoons of batter, three tablespoons of batter, and then I can just weigh it out and figure out the yield for that entire recipe by using a calculator and not by like say actually doling out three tablespoons in each cup and spending that time. Uh, this is all very much something that um, the food writer that I worked for, that I interned for before I joined Delish taught me. Her name was Lindsay Maitland Hunt. Her name is. She's still alive. Very much so. Sorry, Lindsay. Um, she's very lovely. And guys, I don't know if this, <laughs> I don't know if this batter is supposed to be this. I've never made this before. Um, so I'm going to move my computers off of the stove and I'm going to preheat my oven to 375 so we can start baking this first batch soon because we're reaching an hour. Why do I always do this? Are you becoming a YouTuber now? What was June before <laughs> if not a YouTuber? I don't know. I feel like YouTuber kind of connotates that like you make your entire living on YouTube, in which case... No, I'm not a YouTuber. Uh, why does real vanilla have alcohol? Fake vanilla has alcohol too, girl. Yeah, I, it's just to like preserve it in like a suspension, I think. It's, well, maybe doesn't... it doesn't. Water, sugar, caramel color, artificial flavor, citric acid, sodium benzoate. Well, oh, it's okay. That's water plus a preservative? High proof alcohol preserves it, but also extracts the flavor. You didn't wash the tray? I, I wiped it. I didn't want to do a full wash. Because it was it would have been a waste because it was clean already. I was following in your footsteps. Um, the group Instagram is like the spleenies or something, I think. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> What is your favorite cuisine to eat or cook? My two favorite cuisines are Sichuan and Thai. Uh, I flip-flop back and forth on which of those two I love the most. June has variously said things like Japanese, right? Um, and what else? I mean, a lot of Chinese cuisine I grew up yeah, with, it is still just very wholesome to me. But I mentioned on an earlier stream that like, I absolutely love just Italian dessert and dairy. Unparalleled. We're gonna use some chemicals to ensure a nonstick release. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles, absolutely, because it's a more interesting texture. It's way more exciting. We don't eat much American Chinese ever, really. Uh, it's not that we don't like it. There's certainly some dishes that are okay. You know, like, like it's it's sort of good in the in the way fast food is good, but. Yeah, it's not something we eat much. There's raw eggs in here. Don't do this at home. Mmm. Mmm, that's pretty good. It's not quite sweet enough for the American palate, I don't think. Are you adding... Oh, crumb to banana. How about some DiSerrano? Hold your horses. Okay. I have to measure this first, like I mentioned. I do love Cambodian and Laotian food. Anything Thai and Thai adjacent is fine with me. Is that offensive to call? It's literally adjacent to Thailand, those countries. All right. <laughs> On a map. <laughs> um, 
could you do a video one day where you show us how to make traditional dishes? What kind of traditional dishes? Yeah, guys, I'm not a coverall Asian who knows tradition like that. I hope you know that. Yeah, June doesn't magically know, like, just because, all Chinese recipes. <laughs> just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I know how to cook pan-Asian to the utmost traditional degree. Yeah, she's June is an expert sushi chef. Um, how is June the only person I feel like who could pull off this hair? Listen, you just gotta give in to what life gives you, and then once you submit to it and accept your situation, then you learn how to be in that skin. That's it. I don't always feel good in my skin, but on the days that I do feel best about my life are the days that I accept who I am. Sometimes you have a choice of who you are and sometimes you don't. We yielded 473 milliliters if you are interested in knowing that amount, AKA grams. The scale doesn't really differentiate between milliliters and grams. Um, so I'm gonna take half of that back. So that's what, like 230, what did I say? Oh, gosh, did 36, you, did 236, you make it? what? Was there a measurement, boo boo? No, oh. 136, I'm just trying to decide what half is. Uh, June likes Vietnamese food more than I do. We, all, we went to only Hanoi in Vietnam and I was kind of underwhelmed, but June, June enjoyed it more. Will there be a sweet themed budget eats? Yeah, like desserts for $25. It's a good idea. Julia wants me to do that. But guys, here's the thing, right? I'm gonna talk it out with you right now and you can give me your thoughts on this. First of all, I don't want to eat a whole week of sweets. That's literally gonna kill me and then I'm gonna have so many leftover sweets. Think, think about my health for a second. That's one thing. The other thing is, I think the audience attraction to Budget Eats is that it's applicable. Is that a lot of people are actually struggling right now financially. And this show gives them ideas of what to make for food, sustenance, nutrition, on a budget. Who actually needs to cook dessert on a budget? Oh, it's just not, it's just not a very healthy way to eat. It's not a very balanced diet. So I'm just thinking in terms of practical reasoning for both my own health and for the viewers needs. Do you actually want to see a dessert budget? Tell me honestly, I'm not shooting you down, but tell me honestly your thoughts. I'm curious. Uh, how about gluten free budget eats? The vegan one was gluten free. If you want to see me do gluten free with meat, I guess that would be the only difference. But the vegan one was meat uh, was gluten free. Why do I keep opening things that are not sugar, <laughs> wanting sugar? Totally agree, budget sweets while fun isn't entirely practical. Uh, I want budget eats different cuisines like Chinese or Japanese, etc. Yeah, that's an idea that we've talked about. Like, possibly in a post COVID world, June could do budget eats, you know, from various destinations around the I world. I think they mean me cooking that cuisine. I know, yeah, I, I'm expanding on that. Um, yeah, but also that's a possibility. Would $5 budget eats be possible? Well, we have also talked about June possibly doing like a freegan budget eats week where she just like, you know, tries to make uh, make a, a week's meals work from just whatever already exists in the kitchen or, you know, stuff she can scrounge for free from like, I don't know, you know, doing freegan style stuff. Aaron, are you ever scared to try some of June's budget eat creations? Uh, no, unless something has like coconut shavings on it, which as you all know, I hate. Uh, I will eat everything June makes. In fact, uh, my palate is more wide ranging than June's, for example. Like I'm, 
not afraid of brain. I'm not, I love blood in pretty much all dishes. Um, I don't like Balut, similar to June. I've had it and it was pretty bad. I wouldn't eat it again, but there's almost nothing in the world I wouldn't eat. Except coconut. Fuck coconut. Have you ever seen the TikTok meat where it's made from only flour? What? I don't know what that means. I guess we haven't. Neither of us are on TikTok, so we don't know. We're, we're too old. All right, do you want banana liqueur and the brown sugar added one or the white sugar added one? Choose. Uh, banana with the brown. Me too. It's compliment. Oh, it's seitan, says people. What, what's seitan? The thing on TikTok, I guess. Guys, seitan is literally just gluten. It's washed gluten. Have you ever had Filipino din uh pork blood soup? I haven't had the Filipino version, but I have had the Chinese and I think Thai version of pork blood soup, which I love. Big fan. Ooh, the banana is good, guys. The banana is good. Banana is good. I got some shreddy cokes for some of the ah! <laughs> Get those away from me after I just said it. <laughs> uh, there's an app called Too Good To Go. It allows you to buy expired food for a third the price and helps reduce food trash. If it's available in New York, you can try it for I budget. got that Instagram ad. Oh. Uh. It felt very weird to me. What do you mean weird? I don't, just the ad felt very unnatural. I didn't like the ad itself. I don't know anything about the service, though. So. June is skeptical. I'm skeptical. She's... Where's my tablespoon? Spish. I don't know. I haven't touched anything over. I've been over here reading comments. Oh, it's not any mine. Oh, here it is. All right. Here we go. One tablespoon of batter is about 25 grams. I'm going to write that down. I use the app all the time here in Germany. It's quite good here. Says one person. Is that like ready-made food? It's like takeout? I should start saying your names instead of this person or one person. So yes. I'm just afraid of pronouncing them sometimes. That's okay. They know you're not... You know, a robot who knows how to pronounce things. Do robots know how to pronounce things? They do now. It's in 2021. Robots, robots know more than us. Um, what is, is your favorite sushi roll? Or sushi in general, I guess. Do you like American-style sushi or Japanese? Guys, we went to Tokyo, and we Aaron booked this, like, omakase meal without telling me. I'm not a fancy girl. I don't do tasting menus. They're fucking expensive. But this one was fine. It was only like 60 bucks. You know, relatively cheap, I guess, in terms of sushi omakase. And uh, I gotta say, the most mind-blowing thing I had in that entire tasting menu was a tiny block of tofu. That tofu tasted like the most androgynous, sweet, savory, treading piece of cream. Solidified, congealed soybean cream. It was like almost pudding the way that it just kind of unfolded and melted into my mouth. It was a nicely solid, gentle piece, a square, a prism, a rectangular prism, whatever you want to call it. But the moment it hit my mouth, I like pushed my tongue against the upper palate and it just like And afterwards, I couldn't stop saying to Aaron, like, I just want 10 more of those pieces of tofu. That tofu was life-changing. 
Unfortunately, that trip was like maybe three years ago now, so I don't remember it quite well anymore, but I remember my brain being just blown at that point that tofu could be that good. You really go into your mind palace when you're describing food. That tofu was so good! Uh, the restaurant was Manten Sushi Maranucci in Maranucci, if you guys want to go. June is from, June's family is from northern China, from Beijing. So generally the di her background and the dishes she knows tend to be more northern Chinese influenced than like Cantonese or southern Chinese. Uh, but, and for our favorite region and general cuisine, we loved Chengdu and Sichuan. Yes, oh my yeah. God. The tian shui, man, in Chengdu, Translated as sweet water noodle. It's basically like the sweet salty. I think my favorite foods are sweet and salty um, It was basically this sweet and salty noodle. The noodles were thick. They were like as thick as my pinky finger They were chewy you get a tiny little bowl for like one USD and it comes in this sauce. That's just like brown sweet soy saucy mildly spicy Got a nice little tingly Sichuan action going on there. Unctuous sauce. The noodles break when you chew through them, but it's not plasticky at all. It's just such a masterful noodle. And I was like, if we didn't want to try every single thing there once, I would have eaten that bowl 10 times over during our stay because- It was magical, yeah. So good. Um, check out. Uh, Trevor James's videos, The Food Ranger. I'm sure you guys have heard of him if you're on YouTube watching food content already. Uh, but he went there as part of his Chengdu series. And you can see how good it is. Yeah, do you guys watch any um, food channels that you would recommend that we start watching? Because I would love to get your ideas on who we should be learning from. Wow, I can't tell the difference between these two. So... I'm gonna draw myself a diagram out of this carton, I guess. Uh, what's our what's our favorite noodle dish? Mine is all. I love noodles, absolutely, uncontrollably, entirely love noodles. So, all of them, Western and Eastern. Um, June, do you plan on cutting your hair again? I don't have much hair, guys. Um, this one was brown. Good Eats, Big on Spice. Uh, please watch Bong Ear. Do you know what Bong Ear is? Uh, Emmy Made also. Do you know Emmy Made? Yeah, we watch Emmy Made. Okay. Uh, I watch uh, Sola and Rick Martinez. And Mikey Chen. Yeah, Mikey Chen's great. We watch all of Mike's videos. Uh, yeah. Re Rafika's Kitchen. A wonderful Turkish chef. She's so funny and the food looks amazing. Um, yeah, a lot of Emmy made. Very interesting, very interesting. And Great Depression cooking with Clara. That sounds like something you do. Did you steal Clara's ideas or did she steal yours? I don't know. Emmy made binging with Babish and New York Times cooking. And Mangchi. I remember Mangchi. Oh, she's great. great. Um, Josh Weissman, Claire Seifitz, Feast of Fiction, and Chinese Cooking Demystified. Uh, Foodie Nation. I don't know that one. Yeah, you suck at cooking. June, June's a more... You suck at cooking. Yes, you really do. You need a jingle. What's your jingle going to be? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> well, we'll work on it. Yeah, we'll workshop that. Aaron, uh, for the ones that don't have coconut, yes. do you want some granulated sugar or just plain? Is this going to be like a creme brulee if you do creme granulated sugar on top? That's an interesting idea. I could try some. Yeah, let's do one or two with a big enough layer where it sort of creme brulees. And, or torch it, I guess, too, if it doesn't come out in the, in the cooking. Marion's Kitchen, if you guys like Thai food. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, my name is Andong. June loves Andong. He's so cute. Um, he's so cute. I have such a crush on him.
Uh, Chef John from Food Wishes. Yes. He has a weird lull when he speaks, and it always makes me feel like he's trying to put me to sleep. He always does this, he always does this thing where he yeah. goes on an arc, and he ends his sentences just like this. And I feel like I'm getting motion sickness. Here's my diagram, because I have two rows of identity look, <laughs> identity. I have two rows of identical looking batters, so I situated the coconut in each row in different places so I would know which batter is which. Going in. June's Kitchen. Yeah, we love June's Kitchen. The other June. The, the, other, the only more famous cooking June on YouTube uh, than this June. But yeah, he's great because they have four cats, which is four more cats than we currently have. So they are four times uh, better than us. I'm not saying that sarcastically. I mean, I mean that. <laughs> Their cats are awesome. Um, and Made with Lao. Yeah, we just started watching Made with Lao. It's a uh, Made with Lao deserves a lot more views because uh, they he puts so much effort. It's like some of the most well produced cooking videos I've seen on YouTube is Made with Lao. And I like how he gets his whole family involved too. It just feels really nice and genuine. A lot of questions about the cat. The cat is still with the foster. There is no ETA on when we are getting Fred. We still plan on getting Fred, but he still has ringworm, and ringworm can take a long time to treat. He's also FIV positive, so he's a he's a little uh, he's a little cat who needs a lot of care. Have you heard of Barry Lewis? Barry Lewis. Barry Lewis does this thing where he makes four courses with three ingredients. It's pretty cool. I have not. Guess we, neither of us have heard Can of Barry Lewis. Can you write this down, Aaron? I actually want to check these people yes. out. Thank you. Uh, okay. Write it down. Are you hungry? I'm hungry. I am mildly hungry. Anything else we missed? Mm. Guys, we're, we're an hour and 17 minutes in. And y'all are still watching. I'm so impressed. Where's all those parties that you're supposed to be at? Pasta grannies. That sounds fun. Uh, Miss Mina pasta grannies. Yeah, I'll write these down too because I haven't heard of a lot of these. A lot of good stuff. Thank you for the suggestions, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I know you guys love the Big Torch, but I don't know if you've noticed, but the Big Torch burns things really quickly because I can't control the flame size. So I got this butane tank today from Home Depot, and I have a tiny baby torch. Imamu room. She does weekly bento preps. Oh, I'm a huge bento fit. Bento guy. I'm gonna write that down. Imamu room. How do I do this so I don't kill the both of us? Do you know how to attach this? Uh. What? No idea. I'm gonna let you take responsibility for that. Uh, anything and everything Sola. She does a new show with the History Channel. Yeah, it's cool that that they're branching out. I, when I was a kid, the History Channel had actually actual history content on it. Like, you know, where they did documentaries about, you know, mainly World War II and stuff like that, but at least it was historical. And then it just became, you know, like another, just another reality TV channel, like literally nothing to do with history. Do not discard these instructions and warnings. Why are there so many instructions for It's fire. <laughs> it's dangerous, it's fire. 
It, yeah, you guys might see uh, some exciting action here on YouTube if this doesn't go well. What? What doesn't go well? You, could, you might blow yourself up. Do you like ancient aliens? No, I stopped watching the History Channel when they stopped doing the historical stuff. And ancient aliens are, I think, the furthest thing from history possible, right? It's just, like, fantasy. It's a fun idea, but it ain't history. So I think I just stick it on. Gas refilling valve, and it looks like that's the gas refilling valve. How does it attach? Pl just plop it on. Okay. Please make sure the fire is off before refilling. Stop refilling once gas starts overflowing. Wait three minutes before use. Oh! It doesn't stay on like the other one. The other one just like comes out of the tank. I'm just refill. I'm literally just pumping the gas in. Ah, so that is a chamber for the gas. Just a little cool. nas. Okay. That keeps it nice and uh, Nice and compact. Refill, refill the torch in a well-ventilated area free of fire or other sources of ignition and away from people. Okay. How do you refill it away from people if you're a people? I don't know. I don't care. You can come blow me up. I don't mind. Um, do you listen to history podcasts? I listen to one uh, called the British History Podcast. It's very small. I doubt anybody's heard of it, but he's very good. Um... Are you blowing up out there, June? I don't hear any explosions yet, so I think she's okay. Good luck with your wisdom teeth removal. I hope they give you fun drugs. Uh, June did not attend culinary college. She basically taught herself, well, she learned how to cook in restaurant kitchens in New York. Did it work? Yes, but it, okay. I don't know when it's full. It says torch should be filled in about 10 seconds. I think I went about six. So I'm gonna go back and do four more seconds. It says stop refilling once the fuel begins to overflow. I don't want the fuel to overflow. And then it says to wait three minutes to allow fuel gas to stabilize before igniting the torch. So I'm not gonna light it up right now. She's way more responsible than me on this. I would have just stuck that tank in the in the lighter, just jammed it in and just fucking went for it. <laughs> She's actually reading the instructions. Uh, June went to school for English. She was an English major. English literature or just English? One of those? Yeah, I went to Swarthmore College. It's a liberal arts school. I majored in English literature. I minored in education and religion. Um, best Sichuan restaurants in NYC. There's not Guanfu in no. Flushing. We don't fucking like... Pete Wells gave it three stars, and I've never been so angry to give a restaurant money before ever. June is a Pete Wells hater. Uh, I respect his opinions, but uh, you do? yeah, I'm re breaking up right now. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a lot. It's hard for me to come off the top of my head, but uh, I don't have a Sichuan. Uh, restaurant in mind, but there is a um, Chengdu Alley 47 in yeah. Flushing. So good. We went right after we came back from that Chengdu. Is Chengdu is in Sichuan. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes, sorry about that. Sorry about that flub. Um, it was amazing. The sweet water noodles was like 85% as good as I remember the Chengdu ones being, which is like honestly more than I could ever have expected. Um, and all of their stuff was good. We didn't regret a single thing that we ordered. The service was very nice. It was very hands-off. It wasn't cloying at all. And, um, very well-priced. Very, we walked away very happy from that meal. There's one. They got one. I was going to say, this isn't such one, but my favorite restaurant in Manhattan from a much earlier question is... There's a ton, but just one of them that comes to mind is Taiwan Pork Chop House, which Nez is going to hate if Nez is still on the video call because they have a uh, shaved ice mochi dessert that she hates uh, because she has bad taste, but I love. And the rest of their food is good. The savories are awesome. It's just like generally really good sort of uh, like Taiwanese home cooking style place. 
and it's right uh, down on Doyers, which is a very cool street. Really like Taiwan pork chop house. It's on the same block as um, Nomwa Tea Parlor. It's right next to it, yeah. What is your favorite book? What are books? What is a what is a book? What um, is a book? I haven't read, seen. I haven't touched a book in in ages. What is a book? Um, Indian restaurants recommendations. Jersey City. Yeah, Jersey City. Honestly, you gotta leave New York City proper to get a very good Indian. Grove Street in Jersey City is awesome. Many many years ago, but I did check and they are still open. I went to Egg Mania, where I had some of the best Indian food of my life. The best, pro I think the best Indian food I've ever had. I've never been to India, so I'm sure it's better there. But Egg Mania was awesome. And the rest of Jersey City is great, uh, that area for Indian food. What do you want to eat for dinner, Aaron? Uh, I'm going to eat some blueberries at your request, because... That's not it. dinner, but okay. I know, I'll figure something out. My birthday is not in October. Uh, Pisces birthdays are not usually in October. I will not be doing my famous blueberry uh, and maple syrup tonight. I'm just gonna eat some regular fresh blueberries. That, that can I, I've... Can I have some too? Yeah, that I've never eaten before or since. That was just a sort of on the spot thing I came up for Aaron Week. But the cherries and tahini and olive oil, I do eat all the time during cherry season. There were so many comments on that video saying the cherries are weirder. Guys, the cherries are not weirder. The cherries are actually freaking delicious. You really should give it a try. And also the cherries reminded me of this um, place called Martina's. It was a Danny Myers establishment. They used to sell like fast casual, thin crust, kind of Neapolitan pizza, not really. Uh, very thin crust, very friendly service, very casual environment. Pizzas were great, very nicely priced. The place is gone now, I was heartbroken. But the best thing there was the soft serve gelato. And it was just like this very pure, uh, Fior de Latte, like cream-based soft serve. And then you would get a choice of five different toppings on it. And you could get all five if you want. You could get none if you want. It's totally up to you. They had cherry in some sort of liqueur. They had a hot fudge chocolate sauce type thing. They had sea salt. They had olive oil. And they had these candied hazelnuts. So good. Um, my order was always olive oil and salt. Sometimes the hazelnuts, the chocolate was a little bit overpowering for me. But yes, that was the moment when I realized that olive oil, cherries, salt, together, freaking delicious. There is no heartbreak like your favorite restaurant closing. That's true. There's so many that yeah. closed. If, if file ever closed, it, it would be bad, man. I'd, I'd take it pretty rough. Hello, Gabriella from Watsonville, California. Beautiful Watsonville. The fighting Watsons. They're popping! They're so cute! We, that was 13 minutes in the oven. I'm gonna go for like maybe three or four more. It looks like they're puffing, but I want them to get a little bit more golden. They're almost puffing like a muffin, which I was not expecting. But I think what's gonna happen is because that sticky rice is kind of steaming, it's holding that kind of evaporating steam right now, like a balloon. But once it gets pulled out of the oven and cools, it's gonna fall like a souffle. But I'll make sure that all 199 of you who are still on this freaking live stream will get to see it right out of the oven and we'll see how beautiful and round it is soon. Try the canteen doses under the Hindu temple in Flushing. We did. We did. Yeah. 
I didn't like it. I'm sorry. That's the truth. I was kind of disappointed. We heard a lot about it. The atmosphere was so cool though. I loved a lot of the bagged snacks that were available for purchase. But as far as far as the curries went, I just wasn't I wasn't a fan. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just used to like more Americanized, more bastardized Indian food. And that was just like more kind of home cooking. Which I could totally see people used it's church to, cooking. Yeah, people used to like Americanize Chinese food, going to like a Chinese home and eating the casual home cooking stir fry. It's probably not as exciting, you know? Flavors are a little bit blander. There's less salt. There's less oil. There's less fire. Fire everywhere. Fire gives you flavor, but also cancer sometimes. Um, so. Ooh, you better be careful. Uh, we went well past an hour, June. Audio changed. What do you mean audio changed? Can you be more specific? I don't know what that means. For better or for worse? Bye, Natalia Kurtz. Thank you for coming. Greetings from Uruguay. <gasps> wow. Hi, Uruguay. I'm so glad some of you feel like this is a treat. It's a treat for me as well, so it goes both ways. Kind of makes me feel like we're all cooking together, like during a large family gathering for a holiday with my Christmas lights on, cozy. I'm like hugging the oven right now. It's very warm. The smell of butter is slowly evaporating off of my stovetop. Ooh, I can smell caramelization. I think some of that coconut shred on top is getting golden right now. There's a little bit of sugar heating up. Um, bye Yoshikawa! Oh, you're not saying bye, you're just saying audio might be on your end. Gotcha. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's, this is low tech production, <laughs> production guys. This is, this is my cell phone. Uh, really crappy stove lighting. One external light, cause it's in my kitchen, might as well use it. And I don't have audio output. And this is it. It's a low lift production for me, which means it's accessible and easy for me to put together, which means that I can actually put out this live stream and not make it feel like a chore, which I want it to not feel like a chore. I just want to be here, be present. Blueberry time! Can you wash all of them? You want all of them washed? I want to eat all the blueberries. Okay. Here. Wash them in this. I'll do it in this. It has holes. Or actually, this also has holes. You want enough water to be able to, like, squish around all of them. But, yeah. 17 minutes in. Let me see. <sighs> Guys, it looks so golden. I'm going to go for the full 20. Because uh, I want it to get, like, nice and golden, you know. Right now, it's, like, that angelic angel food cake golden. I want it to go like corn muffin golden from that diner that makes really good muffins. Have you visited Malaysia before? No. I love Malaysian food though. I love it more. Fine, you can love it more. Does Aaron like other versions of coconut other than shredded or does he hate all coconut? He used to hate all coconut, but now he's okay with it in like savory curries where the flavor just melds with other flavors and it's not just like, well, bam, coconut. I feel like my mom once made a um, cabbage stir fry with coconut oil. Sorry, Mom, if you're watching this. I really hated that dish. It made me gag a little. The sweetness from the cabbage melted into the fattiness of the coconut oil and just, like, sat in my mouth, and it made me feel like it was curdling inside of my mouth. I think it would have been fine if there was some sort of spice or saltiness or, like, crunchy garlic to offset it, but just between the sweet cabbage and that kind of super fatty nuttiness from the coconut oil... I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Very few do I say no to mom's cooking. That was one of those occasions where I was like, no mom, please, I don't want to eat this. I'm sorry, I'm hurting her feelings. Does Aaron like bitter melon? I don't think so. It's okay, you know. 
good I wouldn't weird. Go on my way to eat it. Would you eat this food combo? Mochi nori melted jack cheese. Yeah. 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 That sounds like sure. a like an onigiri, but Americanized. Fresh coconut with tahini might be up out. I don't think he can handle fresh. I honestly don't think he can handle fresh. I'm gonna turn off the oven um, because I don't think I want to bake another batch. And we're just gonna let the carryover heat run out the last minute and then I'll pull it out and you guys can see. And then we'll use this cake tester that I never use to like try to pull one out and I'll break one for you. But the thing with the butter mochi cakes is I think you're supposed to let it cool before you don't put it here, it's gonna cook. It's very warm. Mmm, cooked blueberries. Blueberries. Who eats blueberries one at a time when you can just go up? Y'all ready for this? Dun 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 dun. Beautiful. Do you see how the, on the bottom mochi it's starting to peel away from the cup? That's usually a great sign that your muffins, whether or not they be mochi, are done. They're starting to shrink back, which means they're starting to get dried out. You don't want them to be too pulled back. I might have overbaked these a little bit, but I wanted to make sure I got that nice goldenness. Um, yes, guys. Oh my gosh. Look at this one has like perfectly toasted coconut on top. I love it. I'm gonna let them cool a little bit. I will break one open if you're willing to stick around a little bit longer. I know it's running on quite a quite a long time. This is our longest stream yet. But I also just don't. I still want to retain 20% feeling in my fingertips. I've already lost 80% of it. What would the world feel like if I could not feel anything my fingers touched? There's people with that actual condition where they can't feel pain. So they're burning and cutting themselves all the time accidentally. These are sweet. Yeah. Guys, are blueberries in season for you guys? I'm seeing like dollar containers of strawberries and blueberries right now. It's not the summer. Usually blueberries are in season during like June through August. But they're really cheap right now. Let me give you a description of the smell, shall we? For those of you who um, still have not received that beta version of smell o vision it smells like coconutty pound cake. It's actually exactly like pound cake. With a little hint of coconut on top. Okay, let's refer to my beloved diagram. So the row with the two coconut toppings in the middle, this bottom row here, that is granulated sugar. We added one tablespoon of granulated sugar into that half batch of batter. And then the row with the coconut shreds added on the ends. That one I added two teaspoons of brown sugar. I wanted to do a tablespoon, but I ran out of brown sugar. And also that one has a banana liqueur. So banana liqueur on here. Which one do you want to taste first, Aaron? Anything without coconut. Um, I've never had mochi. What is it? Mochi it, is, uh... Rice flour. Well, no. Glutinous rice? Mochiko is sweet rice flour, but mochi is a treat that you make with glutinous sweet rice. Um, traditionally, it used to be just literally cooked sweet glutinous rice, uh, and then you would pound it in like a huge batch with just like a huge, it's like a mortar and pestle basically, but huge level, huge scale. You, uh, you can look it up on YouTube. There's this very famous video of two guys in Japan just going at it, like each with a huge log. They're just like heaving their entire body weight. They're going whack, whack, Whoa. whack, whack. <laughs> and it's like really what are you fast, doing? <laughs> it's really fast. Oh, I thought that was a knife, but it still is pointy. Eek, eek, eek. Okay, ready? Wow, it's so soft, guys. It's so soft. It's so soft. Is it too soft? Can you give me a little tiny plate or a bowl? Something that can hold this? Thank you. Perfect. 
All right, guys. Oh, that's beautiful. So this one is the one with added granulated sugar, no coconut for Aaron. Uh, you can see that the top has kind of collapsed in now. It was very bulbous. And you can see that the bottom is nice and golden. That's a beautiful golden. So nice and golden. I know that my lighting isn't quite capturing it. Maybe you can see it now better. Yes. Um, that's what I want to see, girl. That is, do you want, do you want me to brulee this? If you think it still has some caramelization left in it. And I think the people want to see the torch anyways. Of course. We it's all behind want to the see mochi the torch. Girl. Yeah, I know. I'm getting ready. So when you're torching stuff, you want to add a nice even layer of sugar very thin layer of sugar so that you don't have places that have more sugar than others because then they won't burn at the same rate and you'll end up with brown leoparding spots that have more of a bitter flavor and other spots that um, haven't quite melted the sugar yet. I didn't do a great job. You're supposed to do it like you know the Salt Bay does it from a high point and uh, more even distribution but I don't want to clean up sugary messes. I don't want ants. I don't want roaches. Let's see if our torch actually works. There's a lot of instructions to operate this torch, guys. I like my big one where it's just like, wah -bam. Slide the child resistance safety latch downward into the unlock position. Okay. Um, press the trigger slowly and hold it to activate the torch. Where's the trigger, though? Releasing the, the trigger. There you go. It's a cute little lighter. Definitely not as strong as the other one. I'm gonna use my dominant hand so I don't char my non-dominant hand. Oh. Oh, I think I have to do the, there we go. Ready? You ready? Okay. Ooh. Beautiful. So we got a little bit of leoparding, but you know, overall, not too bad. We're gonna let that cool a little bit. Hit that one spot a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like the finer control of this small Absolutely, porch? this one is amazing. So glad. All right, it's a little bit charred, uh, but it's just gonna add cancer and flavor. We like a little bit of cancer and flavor. Can't live life without a little bit of death. Am I right, folks? Um, what does that mean? There you go. <laughs> okay. You can have it. You can enjoy it on camera. That's my only request. And I'm going to give myself I can't a tell if it's one. focused. I'm gonna try a coconut one with the banana in it. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Oh, that smells incredible. Mmm. How is it? Oh my god. Do I not need to do a second test? Is that it? It's amazing. That mochi <laughs> texture interior. It's exactly what I want. Look, the bottom looks like it's going to be a muffin or something. And then the inside is just mochi, gooey amazingness. I'm trying to get a good angle. Yeah, dude. That's wild. Yeah, it, it looks like it's gonna be a tiny muffin, but that's just pure mochi, squishy, gooey brilliance inside. Okay, now, can I show off mine? Yeah. While you go enjoy? Do you want a bite of this? I wanna try mine first. Okay. Guys, this is the uh, brown sugar one with the banana liqueur and coconut on top. You can see that the coconut got nice and toasty in the 375 oven in those 20 minutes. The bottom is also nice and brown. The edges, let me just nibble on the edges because it feels very nice. Okay. Now I will break it open for you. I'm gonna dust off some of the coconut flakes because I really don't wanna clean up my kitchen. I'm so lazy. Hold on, I wanna do the break first.
So tune back tomorrow and I'll show you what the texture looks like the day after because it's supposed to be cool. But this looks like there's all-purpose flour in it, doesn't it? Very strange. I'm not sure if that's the baking powder that I put in. Do you taste any baking powder? No, it's not like, you know, acidic or anything. So folks in the audience who know what butter mochi is supposed to be, let me know if this looks wrong, but I freaking love it. What? Oh my God. What time tomorrow? I don't know, guys. It's gluten-free, right? It is gluten-free, correct. The only flour in here is mochiko. Um, wow. You don't want a bit... Can you try a bit of the coconut? It's toasty. No. Try a bit of this, though. Nice caramelized top. Wow. Very different flavor profile. Do you want one of the banana without, without the coconut? If you want to let them cool for no, tomorrow. No, no, try, try one now. Tell me what you think of the banana one. Okay. Here's the banana one. Golden. Can you actually stand in back with me? You're mm. blocking some of the light. Thanks. And um, this is no coconut for Aaron. Can I break it open? Mm. Half, half. I was expecting it to be a lot gooier, but this is actually puffy and it does look like cake, but there is no all-purpose flour in here. It's literally all just mochi. Um, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be cakey, but it doesn't feel like it in your mouth. I, I actually really like this version. And also I've learned during quarantine mm -hmm. with nobody to feed my mistakes and different trials to that I have to be less of a perfectionist and less of a scientist, dare I say, when I'm developing recipes, simply because I don't, I don't, I don't have the bandwidth to like get rid of all of that food and consume it and not throw it away. And it has helped me embrace the imperfection and tiny little surprises of joy of being a home cook. Because you don't expect things to come out great on the first time. So the old mindset used to be, hey, why don't you try another time and see what happens? But sometimes trying it again raises your expectation of it being better. And that just makes your possibility and probability of being disappointed higher and higher the more you try. So if things are delicious on the first go around, what do you think? Maybe I just don't touch it again because it's already perfect. It is pretty perfect. The banana one was awesome. What's the and, rating? Uh, I think I liked the, was that vanilla the first one I had? Vanilla and creme brulee or just regular? Vanilla and white sugar. Yeah, that was my favorite. Um, my meaningless number. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I kind of I kind of don't like doing these ratings all the time because they are kind of meaningless and they kind of depend on my mood and they kind of depend on, they're just super arbitrary. So you might often notice in the Budget Eats videos, June is like pressuring me to give a rating when I don't feel like it all the time. Sometimes it's more obvious, other times it's harder. I'm gonna eat another one now. This is the uh, one more tablespoon added granulated sugar, no banana liqueur with coconut on top, uh, no creme brulee. I just, I love it so much. And also I think I'm just very hungry right now. And I'm already feeling that sugar kick in. So instead of a numeric rating, I'd say if this was served to me at a fancy restaurant in New York or anywhere in the world as a dessert course, I would love it. Totally down with it. I think maybe like uh, mm. served with gelato on top or something like that. Or, oh, that's what I want. You know, nice. I want this. Thing, gelato. I want this on a bed of warm caramel. That too. And a Why little and a little drizzle of like Nutella like ganache. And then a little crumble all around me of like I want to say pecan praline. I think the nuttiness and the fattiness of pecan with that little hit of sugar, maybe a little bit of like 
black pepper, just a hint of black pepper, and a little bit of salt. I think I need to up the salt in this a little bit. Maybe we go the full half teaspoon, and maybe this is... I'm gonna weigh out how much batter I use because I think this is enough for one whole batch, just this amount. Guys, you did it. You stayed for the longest ever stream. I'm so surprised and I'm so thankful to see all of you here and we're gonna devour, <laughs> we're gonna say some of these to see how they turn out tomorrow and then we'll bake more tomorrow I guess and we're gonna devour our blueberries and I'm gonna go watch all your YouTube recommendations and um, thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe. I'm actually going to meet up with Nez socially distanced tomorrow. We're going to Williamsburg. I'm gonna give her some of my peanut butters that I have 80,000 jars of. And we're also gonna visit a thrift store that we loved and just discovered like five months ago, which was the last time we met up. Uh, that is now closing at the end of the month. So we're gonna go and try to buy some clothes there to remember our beloved shop by and to say, hey, thanks for all the fun times. Hope to see you around soon and I hope I hope we all figure out a way out of this somehow. Shall we do one more meditation? I am so thankful for everyone and I'm so thankful that my trial one turned out really delicious that I might not even need to do a trial two. And that's it. Have a great day. Have a great night. Sweet dreams. Drink lots of water. Eat happy things. And thank you for all of your pet pictures. What a delight.